Hello, this is Chris Kobe of the League of Women Voters of Portland. You are watching the Video Voters Guide. In conjunction with Metro East Community Media, we are here to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Tara Hurst, running for Portland City Commissioner, Position 2. Welcome, Tara, and tell us a little bit about yourself, why you're running for this office, and what unique characteristics you have among all the candidates for the City Commissioner Position 2 position. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I've done a lot of work with the League of Women Voters um, as a, the executive director for Renew Oregon on our climate work um, and really appreciate the work that you all do. Uh, so uh, as you said, my name is Tara Hurst. I'm running for uh, Portland City Council position two. And really my, my story starts when uh, I was 19. Um, I was, you know, I, I hit my rock bottom. I was uh, doing a lot of uh, drugs and alcohol and my life was spinning and spiraling pretty out of control. Um, my mom at the time was afraid, was terrified really, that I wouldn't make it to my 20th birthday. Um, and I found myself right before that, right before my birthday, uh, in my friend's car, I'd hit bottom and she was driving me around all night to make sure that I stayed up so that um, I knew that if I fell asleep, I would probably not have the courage to go and get help. And so we were waiting for a detox bed to, to open up for me. And luckily it did, and that, that's where my story starts, is that I was able to get access to the detox bed and I was able to then go on to treatment, um, both in, I was living in upstate New York at the time, um, but then also uh, it took me to South Florida where I really had my recovery community and and started my new world where i was you know cleaning houses waiting tables and my biggest dream was really to be able to rent one of those apartments that i was cleaning at the time um you know moved on and i i actually ended up selling cars uh at a chevrolet dealership at, at 21 and i uh, worked my way through that and actually became the general sales manager and ran the dealership uh it was then I had my son, um, right after that I had my son and I did not want to raise him in South Florida. So I found Portland and moved our family to Portland because I just fell in love. Um, my, I have family in the Bay Area and Portland just spoke to me. Um, so I love this city and it's where I've been raising my son since he was two and he's about to, supposed to graduate eighth grade uh, at Sunnyside uh, K-8. And you know we're all going through the different ups and downs and disappointments that that this pandemic has um, created. Uh, so you know I I didn't get my degree until later in life. So when I moved here to Portland, I went to Portland State and got my bachelor's of social work, and that's really where I got into politics. Um, I worked as a or I was a legislative intern for the National Association of Social Workers. And we went down to Salem and lobbied in Salem for uh, the session. And I saw just how accessible our government was and how we really could make policies that impact folks. And it was really powerful and it was profound for me. So I, I started down the path of politics. Um, I worked in the legislature for Jennifer Williamson for her first term uh, and spent a minute in the majority office. And then I got recruited to come to City Hall and uh, be the deputy chief of staff to Mayor Hales. Um, there I saw just how important city government is and how much of an impact we can have on people's lives. And I really uh, cherished that time. It was, uh, it was a lot of work and really important work that we were able to do for the city. And for the last three years, I've been the executive director uh, for Renew Oregon, uh, the, the state's largest climate coalition uh, that has been working on pushing a price on carbon for the last three and a half years, um, and really about climate solutions. We are over 60 organizations. Like I said, we've worked with the League of Women Voters. Um, and we also have 200 plus farms and ranches in our coalition, over 800 small businesses. And it's um, with that perspective of coalition building and our steering committee that has brought this unique perspective of how do we make the impact that Oregon needs to do on climate um, as well as moving forward our economy. So it was, you know, about really investing in our economy and transitioning to a clean energy economy. And we, you know, the legislature failed us, full mm -hmm. stop. 
And oh, let, me, I, let me ask you, let me ask you this, Tara. Um, we've got a pandemic going on, and if you get elected to the city council, we've had uh, the, we're going to have the effects of the devastation of small businesses, city employee layoffs, and housing displacements will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address that fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's one that I think is on all of our minds as we're looking through this. Um, you know, what I want to see is our rapid response for small businesses and making sure that we are getting their doors open as quick as possible once it is safe uh, to do so, and and having and incentivizing them to uh, hire folks back, their employees back as soon as possible. I know that when you are um, unemployed, it's much harder to get back into the workforce, especially for you know workers uh, pretty much you know that that are in my age and older. Uh, and and it, for businesses, they can't wait long. So I really want the city. I want to make sure that the city is extremely responsive to our small businesses. They're what makes Portland great, right? It's why we love our city. Um, and I also want to make sure we are we walked into this with a houseless crisis and an affordability crisis, and we are that is not going to go away. It's going to be exacerbated. And unless we really attack that head on, we have a general fund reserve right now of seventy nine million dollars that was set aside. You know, the Hales administration really helped um, increase that, and, and Wheeler has taken a good job in continuing that. And that's supposed to be there for half of it is for um, emergency appropriations, which we are in the middle of, and the other half is for a recession, which we are headed towards really fast. So I think that we need to not be worried or waiting for when the crisis fully, the impacts fully hit, what we need to be doing is addressing and being flexible and responsive immediately to families who could be slipping uh, into houselessness and to our small businesses especially. Um, there's a lot of issues that we're gonna need to, to address, uh, but those are the two that I think we need to do right away. We also need to be tapping into our philanthropy, our big businesses who've been able to weather the storm, and um, Portlanders of means and, and bring them to the table and ask them for help. Uh, we have a really incredible community that has a community spirit like none other. Uh, and I've lived in a lot of cities and and we need to tap that more than ever. And I, and I know we can, um, and this is really hard times and it's really dark for a lot of us. We can rebuild in a way that is Portland um, and fix some of the systemic issues that we have. Okay, uh, Tara, real quick last question. If we maintain our current government structure, what city bureau would you want to oversee and why? Um, so I don't think we will, but I would want to oversee either the Parks Bureau um, because it is in dire straits and I really do love our parks and I think our park system is also another reason why mo many people gravitate towards Portland and we can't let it slip through the cracks, um, you know, with the constant budget cuts. It is an essential service in my mind and I think that when we treat something as an essential service, we should be investing in it. So I'm really interested in the Parks Bureau. I've also, when I was with Mayor Hales, we did our community center initiative, which was making community centers more accessible to all um, youth in Portland because the $5 really is a barrier to many people. Um, and I'd like to do a lot more on that, especially now more than ever, we're gonna need safe spaces to be and safe, safe once it's, once we're allowed to be together again, uh, we're gonna need those spaces and we're gonna really need to do a lot of community healing and that's the way, those are the spaces that we can do. So Parks Bureau, I've got my eye on. Very good, okay. Thank you very much, Tara. Uh, this has been the Video Voter's Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote. On behalf of the League of Women Voters and Metro East Community Media, thank you very much for watching.